And without further ado, I'm really excited to introduce Tim Lennon, CTO of the Drupal Association. Tim, over to you. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Shiv. Thank you, Danny. Thanks for having me here. I'm happy to be invited and participate in this conversation and talk with you all about Drupal 9 and the exciting uh, elements that are in there. Um, I'm going to pause here just on my first slide a little bit to tell you a little bit about why I'm excited about Drupal 9 and why I think you should be too. So Drupal 9 is the culmination of um, a change in the community development process that, that built Drupal. Um, when we introduced Drupal 8 about five years ago, uh, we moved to a model of continuous innovation where new features have been added every six months that greatly enhance the user experience. Uh, we talked earlier about how attendees want to um, speak to the attendee experience, the author experience. There's a lot of tremendous work that's happened there, and that's something that Duncan will be talking about a little bit more later in the presentation. So there's a lot to be excited about, um, and before I go into the rest of my slides, I do want to encourage you to check this out on drupal.org. You can find information about Drupal 9 in more detail, or a recent blog post on Stack Overflow that I wrote that can give you a real good deep dive. Um, so let's keep going. I think one of the things that's uh, important to consider is where Drupal falls in the CMS marketplace and how it compares to some of the proprietary solutions out there that you might be using um, if you're uh, an existing uh, heavy CMS user or if that you might be considering in a comparison with Drupal. Um, so over the years, Drupal has um, increased its focus on richness and reach what uh, what Dries, the founder of Drupal, calls ambitious digital experiences. So that doesn't necessarily mean that these are that those have to be sites of huge enterprise scale, although it can mean that. What it really means is anyone who has a digital use case that requires uh, building an experience that's engaging, that's interactive, uh, that goes beyond just you know reading a brochure in a digital format. So. Um, Drupal has done a lot in that space. In fact, I think we're the leader in the digital experience space in many ways. Um, so, you know, from a security perspective, because we are such a large open source project and we believe in the power of transparency and open source, um, you know, we have tremendous resources from the community and also from organizations that sponsor the Drupal security team. Um, the scalability and performance features of Drupal are unparalleled. Um, if you want to dive into this a little bit more, uh, look up Big Pipe. Big Pipe in Drupal, it's a feature introduced originally in Drupal 8 um, and enhanced in Drupal 9, is just an incredible tool um, for uh, improving the time to first page render for all your digital experiences. And of course, Drupal is known for its flexibility, the ability to uh, build the experience that exactly meets your needs and to integrate all of the modules and themes that the community has developed to make that an easier process, increase your time to market, um, and just make that uh, a quicker process. Um, in addition, we have a few more points of comparison here. So um, from a maintenance perspective, of course, um, because Drupal is open source, there's always that full access to the source code to help you support and maintain your Drupal sites. Um, and there's a huge amount of uh, community support. So not only does the community help support uh, at bug fixes, features, and security, but there's an ecosystem of organizations, um, including experts like the CyberDuck team here who can help you with uh, everything that you need to do. There's no vendor lock-in in the Drupal space uh, the way there is. So, you know, with some proprietary platforms, you get the roadmap that they want. Uh, with Drupal, you can be part of that decision-making process. You can help to find the roadmap for the product. Um, and finally, there's no licensing fees for Drupal itself. We do recommend working with experts. And of course, there's always a cost associated with that but the cost is directly related to building your use case and your site and not uh, just taking up those budgets with ongoing fees. So I think it's a really, some really powerful reasons to, to put Drupal at the top of your list uh, in addition to the technical and, and features uh, that again, that Duncan is gonna talk about a little bit later. Um, I wanna briefly touch on some news that actually just came out yesterday. So this slide has just changed overnight. Um, so many of you out there might be on Drupal 7, um, and Drupal 7 was originally scheduled for end of life in November of 2021. And we have just announced, uh, the Drupal security team and the Drupal core maintainers have just announced that support is being extended for one more year. Um, and I want to speak to that uh, on a couple fronts, because this extension 
doesn't mean that we should procrastinate on our upgrades to get to Drupal 9, right? Um, it's there to provide a little bit of extra breathing room and it's there to provide more support from the community itself so that community maintainers of modules and the security team continue to help update uh, the migration path from seven to nine, continue to help update the, the modules to make sure they're compatible and get you ready. But I would still strongly encourage you uh, to work on this update as soon as you can um, because um, you know, you'll need the time that you can get. The migration from seven to nine is the last big migration in Drupal. Um, after that, the upgrade process is significantly easier. And if you're already on Drupal 8, um, it's quite an easy process. There are some people out there who've been tweeting about it. And even on the first day of Drupal's launch, they've completed their updates in like 15 or 30 minutes. It's pretty cool. Um, so uh, this talks a little bit about end of life and support. Um, certainly, if you have more questions, please put them in our Q&A and we can talk about them some more at the end. Um, I want to talk specifically about that actual process of updating to Drupal 9. So it's really a five step process that uh, you would need to undertake. Um, and it's the kind of thing that you can do with an internal IT team, but you can find um, experts in the community who can help you to go through this process. So the main things that you need to do is ensure that your environment is compatible. This means the system requirements have changed, right? We're on later versions of PHP, of MySQL. Um, and that's because that those versions are the ones that now have security support. Um, a lot of times you might find that, you know, if you're still in the, the MySQL 5 generation, you're actually um, uh, perhaps at risk um, because that's no longer getting regular updates. Um, if you're on Drupal 8 um, or if you've managed to get there already, you need to make sure that Drupal 8 core is just on the latest version. Those updates come out every six months, the minor version updates with new features. And those updates are quite easy to perform. Um, you'll need to make sure that the contributed projects that you use, the, the community built modules are ready for Drupal 9 and be updated to the latest versions of those for, so that you're prepared for that update. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that because I know that's an important topic for many of the people watching. Uh, and then if you have custom code, you need to make sure that that code has been made ready as well, that it, that it removes the things that were deprecated from Drupal 8 and uses the versions of those functions that are Drupal 9 ready. Um, but once those four kind of prerequisites are ready, you can just update Drupal core itself to Drupal 9. And if you're, if you are one of those Drupal 8 users, that actual update is pretty much identical as long as you meet these prerequisites to an update from say 8.7 to 8.8. .8. It's so much easier um, than these updates used to be when you had to do a replatforming. Um, so it's a, it's a really good uh, situation. So let's talk a little bit more about those projects, those contributed modules that, um, uh, that everybody uses to kind of snap together and build their Drupal sites. Um, so firstly, if you're coming from Drupal 7, something that's really important to know is that a lot of those um, features that might have come from contributed modules before are actually now part of Drupal core, right? Views is part of Drupal core. Some of the really core functionality is in there already. So you may not need to find a contributed module in order to keep doing those, that core functionality that you use on your site. Uh, but similarly, um, this slide here was actually a snapshot from the day of Drupal 9's release. It's already improved even further to show that the top 200 most used contributed modules are, uh, at the time, they were 87% already compatible with Drupal 9. Uh, that's up to maybe 97% today. It's already moved even more. Um, and these top 200 projects cover probably 95% of the site use cases out there. So if you're thinking to yourself, oh, it's going to be a while before uh, the modules are ready for Drupal 9, that's probably not the case. Many of them are ready today. Um, and that's something you should definitely check out. Um, Finally, there's a few tools that you can use um, that'll help you determine whether you're ready to go. Um, so this is something that a partner can help you uh, install and set up, um, run these tools, uh, or you can work with your IT teams when you're building requirements to work with your partners. Um, one is the upgrade status module, which you can install, which um, here's a couple screenshots here. Basically, it'll do a site audit of the installed modules you have, the environment versions, basically those sort of five steps that I showed before, it'll help you check all of those and see, are you actually ready to perform this upgrade? 
and it'll give you some, some warnings or errors if there are any issues and information about how to remediate those and get those solved. Um, another tool is the uh, Upgrade Rector or also Drupal Rector. So this is a really cool uh, tool provided by the community on drupal.org um, that actually can automatically update your custom modules or contributed modules. Um, it covers um, more than 50% of the most common compatibility issues in custom code or contributed modules. So basically you can run this tool against your custom code. It gives you a patch and you can apply that patch and usually be ready to go. It won't necessarily cover everything, but it can give you a huge jump start on upgrading custom code to be ready for Drupal 9. 